Hey guys, if you're looking to get the latest updates on Microsoft 365, but don't want to spend hours going through the 100 or so announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode, we're going to cover the highlights that you don't want to miss. Okay guys, so we're going to go through the February updates, but just a quick reminder, I do supplement this video with a blog post with helpful information and links to all these announcements. So be sure to check that out in the video description. Getting into it here though, we're going to start off with Microsoft Teams as we usually do. If you're a user that's ever been on a Teams meeting and said, can you hear me? This announcement might be for you. With this update in the toolbar for Teams, when you're on a Teams meeting, you'll have a visual indicator on your microphone icon that allow you to visualize if your audio is coming through or not. And if you click on it to expand the drawer, as you can see in that screenshot, you'll also be able to see the volume of which you're speaking as well too. So you make sure you're not screaming at everybody else on the call. Timelines for this one's mid-April and be complete by late April. Speaking of updates, guys, we've been making some updates to Cloud Capsule, which is the automated Microsoft 365 security assessment tool that I built that allows you to generate a security report with over 100 data points in less than 90 seconds. Signing up is really quick. You can go into the sign up section here and sign in with your Microsoft credentials. From there, you'll just type in a tenant domain, click on start assessment. You'll grant permissions to the application here for the read writes that we need to run the assessment. And then within seconds, you're gonna to start to have all of these data sets run and flowing through that maps to various compliance frameworks such as CIS and NIST. After the assessment runs, you can immediately share this report white labeled with your logo here as an executive summary with your customer toggle it here now into white mode and attach various frameworks like CIS to look at the mappings and get a comprehensive executive summary. So be sure to check out Cloud Capsule. It's cloudcapsule.io. I'll link that in the description as well. You can start a free trial and run a free assessment. This next one here is also giving access to chats while sharing a screen privately. Previously, if you try to do this, maybe if you're just screen, sharing your screen, you're on one monitor. It's really hard to access chat. You often have to you know, pull that up for everybody to see. And in many cases, I've been on calls where people have brought this up and they didn't even remember they were screen sharing. So we ended up seeing a really private chat and it got really awkward really quickly. So this will be a huge plus and huge win for getting that privacy while you're screen sharing. This will happen mid-May and be complete by early June. Next one here is just kind of reducing clicks and giving a better user experience around sharing files faster and chat and channels. There's a couple of screenshots here I'm showing that kind of relate to the accessibility right within a chat where you can share a document and not have to open a document and then provide access directly through a modal experience so this will happen mid-April and be complete by early May. This next one here, if you've ever used the annotation feature, usually only available for presenters, this is giving meeting participants the ability to request collaboration and annotate uh, themselves within there. So you'll see both the requester in the sense of the user trying to request access to do so, and then the presenter or the main meeting organizer getting that request uh, to allow access to do that. This has been a long time Slack feature, but now just coming to Teams. Timelines on this one is gonna be mid-April, be complete by early May. Next one here was probably a bigger news this week, although I don't know why, because I would hope that there's not many people out there on Skype, but this is Microsoft basically officially giving Skype an end of life date here for interoperability with Teams. Um, and this one's going to be May 1st, uh, 2025, and you won't be able to communicate with Skype accounts after this is implemented. Should never have been doing that before, but just wanted to call it out. Next one here is for scheduled meeting delivery and channels. This is something that you can do today within chats and teams, individual chats, but also within email and Outlook, you can schedule emails to go out. And now you can do that within the channel experience here. So you can schedule that on a specific date. I actually use this a lot because I'm an early riser and I don't like to message people at 4 a.m. Usually they don't like that too much. Next couple here are related to the Teams admin centers or more of that IT admin within your company or if you're an MSP. This is giving you the ability to look at additional security configuration information for applications that are in your ecosystem or you want to onboard. And it's really related to security and compliance posture and you can see that here visually within these screenshots and this is giving you some ability to understand if you have riskier apps within your ecosystem which is great just for baseline security protections this will happen late february be complete by early april next one here for, as an admin is more of a health dashboard where you can see a lot of the telemetry information around the applications deployed to your desktops 
on Mac and Windows devices. This will be things like app crashes, app updates, things like that. This will happen late March and be complete by late April. Next one here, you're using Teams Voice and you have the Cues app. This is giving you further capabilities here to monitor Whisper, Barge, or Takeover. It's a lot of those coaching capabilities that you'd wanna have as part of a call center, part of an organization. Timelines for this one's late April, be complete by early May. Shifting into Microsoft Outlook here, not sure if this is gonna be adopted or not, but you're gonna be able to create newsletters directly with Outlook. It's gonna be one of your add-in applications here that you're gonna get with your base licensing for no additional cost, but this is giving you the ability to create and distribute and view metrics around different types of newsletters that people in your organization could subscribe to. Again, more information about this one in my blog that you can see, but this will happen early August and be complete by early September. This next one here is related to Outlook on iOS and Android. This is giving users the ability to request delivery receipts and read receipts while they're composing an email. You can see that here in the screenshot. This will happen mid-March and be complete by mid-April. Shifting into Microsoft 365 apps today, we're just going to talk about OneDrive. This one in particular though is a pretty cool announcement, giving users the ability to protect a PDF with a password. They have kind of two dual functions with this, one of which is that users can set up a password to protect their PDF files, and they can also bifurcate that into an owner type of password that grants certain access to operations like being able to print, copy, and modify uh, the content within the PDF, so just more DLP related considerations there as well. This will happen mid-March and be complete by late March. Shifting into Microsoft Intune here, Hot Patch was announced at Ignite this past year and is now in a public preview. You can actually view this if you go into the Intune Admin Center and you would be able to set that up under the Windows Update section um, and run through creating your first policy here. This is you know, encompassing some prerequisite information you have to have in order for this to work. So be sure to check that out in the blog for more of that detailed information. But you can check this out. No timelines yet on GA, but this is in a preview state today. Shifting into Entra here, or Entra, as I like to call it. Some of you called me out for a few weeks ago. This is another preview function for QR code authentication flow. And this was designed specifically for frontline workers who may be accessing shared devices all day or periodically throughout the day and don't want to have this cumbersome aspect of remembering usernames and passwords or having to type those in every time they access it. So this is giving them, as you can see here in the screenshot flow, the ability to scan a QR code with their camera and then sign in here with a pin. And so this is just giving them you know, quicker accessibility. There's some mixed feels out there though from the sense of the sentiment because of the proliferation of QR code attacks recently. But this is in preview today, no timelines just yet on general availability. Second one here with Entra is related to Microsoft pushing some more managed policies for conditional access. If you are familiar with these, they've been pushing a couple up to date related to you know, enforcing MFA for admin portals. The next two here that they're trying to roll out specifically is to eliminate device code flow, which we've seen a proliferation of attacks recently. So they just want to lock that down completely because not a lot of people would use that. And it is an attack surface that's getting exposed a lot more today. And then we have the legacy authentication methods that don't support 2FA. Most of us are blocking that today, but be careful here because if you don't and you have something like SMTP relay with printers going on, um, that's using legacy authentication, they, that would break down you know, with Microsoft pushing this policy out and then turning it on. But they're gonna do that in February, then you'll have this 45 day window. So be sure to check that out. You should likely already have a blocking policy, but it's potential that you didn't because of certain infrastructure. So just be careful about this one as they roll that out across tenants. Shifting into the admin section here, first announcements related to the end of life or deprecation of the WSUS driver synchronization. This is something that's been around for quite some time, was used a lot though. So I just wanted to call it out here. The service is scheduled to deprecate April 18th. You can shift into a more modern approach using Microsoft Intune, and there'll be links to that in my blog as well. Next one here is really cool, and I think just as an addition to an existing type of retention policy, where previously, as you can see here in this screenshot, you only had the capability to define the policy based off the trigger of when the items were created when they were last modified, but now it's giving you the capability to trigger that based off of a last access date. So that's a more true north, in my opinion, of if that document still needs to be around, but you could also dictate that depending on what documents they are and what information you're applying that uh, retention policy to. 
This one will happen mid-March and be complete by late March. This next one here is a really cool announcement for Windows 11 devices and basically being able to define if you want to update the device during the out-of-box experience. It's really cool because you can incorporate this as a setting within Windows Autopilot. And so maybe when you drop ship devices now, when that device boots up, it'll be able to go ahead and automatically update through that out of box experience, which is a nice user experience uh, for us as IT admins. And this is gonna be around the mid 2025 timeframe. Last one here from the admin section, just related to a usage migration report really for users migrating from the old classic Outlook to the new Outlook. Microsoft's forcing that um, across the board in kind of a tiered rollout plan. You can delay it uh, for certain admin settings that I've covered here in the past, but this would allow you to monitor that transition now or when you have to do it in the future if you're pushing that off. Timelines for this one's early March and be complete by late March. Shifting into the last section here, which is Microsoft Copilot. This first one's related to a security update where they're incorporating the safe links functionality and protections from Defender for Office 365 into the hyperlinks that are included in chat responses. When I saw this, I thought, did somebody already get you know popped from this um, based off of a malicious link? Very possible given they're including it, but maybe they're just being proactive as well. Timelines on this one though is late March, be complete by late May. Next one here is Microsoft Teams. It's a out of the box facilitator agent to take notes and meetings and chat. So just more of a proactive approach here. It's one of their out of the box agents that will go ahead and activate, if you will, if you're in a Teams meeting and you're recording that with transcription and it's allowing you to collect a lot of information and pump information proactively to you versus today where you have to go back in, look at the recap, look at the notes, start asking questions. So I'm interested to see you know, what this looks like once it comes out. This will happen early April, be complete by late April. Next one here is changes to the Copilot settings in Outlook. I thought this was a funny one because this is basically giving users the ability to turn off Copilot that have the license. It's very possible you don't want you know that functionality in Outlook, but you want it in Teams. But it also plays into this idea of well, if you have the license, why would you why would you turn it off? Um, you know, if it's actually valuable to you, which makes me think it isn't for some people. Um, but this would hide you know that functionality that you see if you do have a Copilot license. This next one here, this was an announcement from a while back. They talked about Copilot Actions, which is basically giving our users the ability to automate and schedule common tasks like, hey, every Monday, summarize my inbox or something like that. Looks like early March is the time frame we're gonna get a targeted release, not general availability, um, but something where you could start to play around with that. Next one here is also a new functionality coming to Outlook for prioritize my inbox. There's been you know hype around this as well too from Ignite but this is giving users the ability to turn this on so that it kind of analyzes your inbox and puts your top priority items up at the, at, at the top of your inbox itself. So you can prioritize that and you can train it over time as well. So I'll be interested to see how well that works versus today when I asked Copilot to summarize my inbox, it gives me you know, the spam email that I get for, from a marketing perspective that I don't care about at all. So timelines on this one, just a generic April 2025. So looking forward to that once that comes out. Last one here is related to Copilot Studio and kind of the agents that you would build where you can actually reference and add a SharePoint uh, document repository or files as a knowledge source. So this is really powerful in my opinion because you could build a chat bot really quickly based off your own information and just point it to a SharePoint site or a specific document library or even a specific folder, file, etc. So this is very powerful and you can set this up right away. It takes a few minutes. I actually built a video last week on getting started with AI agents where you can see more of this if you want to check that out. This is GA today though too, so you'll be able to go into Copilot Studio if you have a license for Copilot and test this out. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely subscribe to the channel if you wanna see these update videos each month. Comment below with some of the features that you're most excited about. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next week.